Conway for two weeks, huh? He's all right, Kate. Yeah, how do you explain that? Probably did his laundry and hung it out to dry. Those are mom's sheets. It was darn nice of him to take the trouble to do them. Uncle Joe, how come every time a deadbeat comes to this hotel, he asks for you when he registers? I got a national reputation. For what? <laughs> Whose notebook is that? It's got Mr. Conway's name on it. I guess he dropped it. He didn't drop his wallet, too, did he? It's a list of hotels. Are we in it? Yeah. Shady Rest Hotel. Be sure and contact it. Oh, it's just a lot of useless information. May I? <laughs> Be sure to contact Joe Carson. He is a big windbag. But if handled right, he is good for two weeks free room and board. <laughs> Caution. Avoid Kate Bradley. She's murdered. What's that? Well, it looks like a traveling salesman's guide to the hotels of America with handy hints for avoiding payment. <laughs> how about that? I wonder how many books like that there are. What worries me is how many are there with Uncle Joe's name in them. <laughs> Joe Carson should be contacted at the Shady Rest Hotel by performers stranded in the Hooterville area. Who's stranded? Hooterville or us? <laughs> what else does he say, Harry? Who said that? Me. What was that? What else does he say? Uh, Carson is a big windbag and a sucker for show people. Pete Lang, Hawkeye Connie Show, suggests mentioning fact Carson produced Hooterville Talent Contest in 1945 and was ringmaster of Elks Club Circus in 1952. Caution. Avoid owner Kate Bradley. She's murder. What's our next move? To find our windbag. Come on, honey. <laughs> Sir? Yeah. I wonder if you could help me. I'm looking for a gentleman by the name of Joe Carson. Do you know him? Does Joe Carson owe you any money? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, I might be giving him some money. I'm Joe Carson. <laughs> the Joe Carson? Why, it's not possible. It certainly isn't. <laughs> I mean, uh, you're such a simple man. But you never know. You never know what? Mr. Carson, my card. Harry Harmon, proprietor, Sills Harmon Circus. You in the show business? Out of course I'm in show business. I'm here, Mr. Carson, because Pete Lang told me you're the only man in show business that could help me. Pete Lang? Yes, you remember Pete Lang, summer of, uh, 52. The Elks Club Circus. Pete said if it hadn't been for you, there wouldn't have been any performance. <laughs> yeah, Pete Lang, he probably yeah. saw me ringmastering. He's having a little trouble with the dancing bear. I taught him a couple of steps, wasn't much. It doesn't sound like much. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the way Pete Lang tells it. According to him, you're the best little show doctor in the country. And, Doc, I've got a sick circus on my hands. Do you think you could have my circus on its feet in, say, two weeks? Well, uh, that depends. You're absolutely right. It depends on how hard we work to incorporate your creative suggestions for the rehabilitation and rejuvenation of our fun-filled little extravaganza. Am I right, Doc? Well, uh, yes, but... Uh, no buts uh, about it, Doc. You're calling the shots from here on in. You're the doctor, Doc. Now, where are your offices located? Offices? Yeah. Uh, well, I live at the Shady Rest Hotel. Ah! If that's where you want us, that's where we're going to be. You're the doctor, Doc. Now, you see, the trouble with our show is the first 45 minutes. You know what I mean, Doc? Nothing seems to happen. Oh, and Mr. Harmon came to me with his problem. I suggested we make this our headquarters. Oh, you suggested it. That's right. You see, if we're all under the same roof, I can doctor the show while they're on their two-week layoff. Oh, they're out of work, huh? Oh, that's a bad choice of words, Mrs. Bradley. Why, the Sills Harmon Circus hasn't been out of work for 15 years. Right, Mary? Right, Mrs. Bradley. The only reason we're standing here right now is that my husband is a perfectionist. He's constantly pumping new blood into our company. Yes, sir. And when it comes to new blood, you just don't take chances. You get the best doctor in town. And I can't think of a better man than old Doc Carson. <laughs> Doc Carson? Well, that's just an expression we use in the show business, Kate. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Bradley, I presume you have enough rooms for all of us? The whole circus? Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, I was referring to my executive staff, Mr. Tingling, Mr. Farnham, and Mr. Haley. Tingling, Farnham, and Haley. That's part of my organization. Uh, Mrs. Bradley, I'll be taking care of all the bills. Tell me, are you a member of the uh, Wayfarers Club? No. Uh, how about the, uh, the Bill of the Month Club? Very nice. Son of a gun. 
I never thought that I'd see the time when anybody would go for a good old solid cash. <laughs> on you for a little favor, Mrs. Bradley. Would you keep my jewels in your safe? Oh, well, we don't have a safe. You don't? Harry, let's go someplace else. Oh, Mary, forget it. Mrs. Bradley looks honest. <laughs> Besides, these jewels are insured for $20,000. <laughs> May we have the key, Mrs. Bradley, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, will you have the bellboy bring our bags upstairs in a little while? I want to tell you this is a charming place, isn't it, honey? Look at that staircase. Look at that elevator. I'm so glad old Doc Carson talked this in the same here. Uh, just a second, Doc. Now that the patients have been put in their room, would you mind answering a question for Nurse Bradley? What sanitarium did you meet him in? <laughs> Pete Lang told him about me. Pete Lang? Who's Pete Lang? You remember him. He was around when I ringmastered that Elks Club Circus. Oh, yeah. When, when you taught the dancing bear those fancy steps. Who's Pete Lang? <laughs> well, you remember him. He was that nice-looking fellow with a little mustache. He wore an overcoat just like the one Mr. Harmon has on. Here, yeah, Max. Now, remember, you're John L. Tingling. John L. Tingling. Welcome to the Shady Rest. Thank you. Well, here you are, Mr. Tingling. Room three, top of the stairs. Oh, by the way, uh, when will Mr. Farnham and Mr. Haley be here? Well, they ought to be here just about the time I hang up this coat. <laughs> well, here you are, Mr. Farnham. Room two. Well, thank you. Beat it, you mutt. Suitcase? <laughs> Kate, these circus people are all ventrotriloquists. Is that right? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Take me upstairs. <laughs> I guess you'd better take him upstairs. <laughs> seen that coat before, but not in the small economy size. <laughs> all circus people dress eccentric. The important thing is, business is booming, and we stand to make nothing but money. I wish I was as sure about the money as I am about the nothing. Stop worrying. We're dealing with one of the biggest outfits in the country. You got to look at Mrs. Harmon's jewels, didn't you? Not with a magnifying glass. There's something about this whole setup I don't like. Something smells awful fishy. <laughs> Pardon me, lady. I'm Mr. Haley. Am I the last to arrive? And the first to leave. Get him out of here. <laughs> this is Cecil, my pet seal. He goes everywhere I go. Except upstairs. Hey, now, wait a minute. If he can't stay, then I won't stay. And neither will Mr. Harmon or Mr. Tinling or Mr. Fun. I'll tell them while they're checking out. Now, get wait him out. Wait a minute, Kate. Mr. Haley, fortunate for you, you've picked one of the few hotels in the country that has its own special seal accommodations. Oh. <laughs> This way, I'll show you. Uncle Joe, I'm warning you, these two better be the last. Come on, Cecil. <laughs> hey, girls, come on down. Why? We just got in. Yeah, the water's wonderful. It's nice and warm. One of our guests wants to go swimming. There's plenty of room. Yeah, why don't you have him come on up? Who is he? Well, his name's Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right down. <laughs> All right, come on, fellas, let's go. Kate Bradley, I'd like to make up your room. Uh, just a minute, Mrs. Bradley. I'm not decent. <laughs> I'll be 
right with you, Mrs. Bradley. Calm down. Sit down. Relax. <laughs> Sorry, Merv. Come in, Mrs. Bradley. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I'd like to make up the room. Sure, honey, go right ahead. That's all right, Mrs. Bradley. We show people are used to fresh air. Well, then I'll make the bed. Oh, don't do that. Why not? We show people are very superstitious about strangers making our beds. We always like to make them ourselves. Oh, well, I wish I had more guests that are superstitious. <laughs> all right, then. I'll just uh, leave you the towels. Where are the towels? Towels? You see any towels, Mary? No. You're going to bring us some, aren't you, honey? I had six towels when I came into this room. Oh, you just thought you had them. Oh, no, 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 I had them. Well, they're not here. Now, look, Mr. Harmon, when I came oh, in that... It just came to me. <laughs> now I know where I've seen you before. Mary and I have been trying to remember. In the movies. Oh, no, I've never been in the movies. Well, then it must have been in television. <laughs> you mean to tell me you've never been a star in show business before? No. Can you believe that, Mary? It seems impossible. <laughs> a beautiful, talented woman like this in Hollywood has ignored her. Well, they're not going to get away with it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get in touch with my agent the first thing in the morning and see that this situation is remedied. Uh, but That's all right. Don't thank me. I owe it to the American public. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Harmon, when you talk to your agent, would you ask him if he knows where the towels are? <laughs> Mom, how many cans of mackerel shall I give to Cecil? I don't know. Boy, that seal, he's like a horse. So do his friends. <laughs> oh, did you? More corn, Mom. That's the third time I filled that up. Hey, Mom, what are we going to eat? How many cans of mackerel have we got left? <laughs> Bring it over here, Billy Joe. I haven't had a bite to eat. Hey, Jeff. Oh, sure. Oh. Have some more chicken, honey, please. It's your third helping of chicken. How can you eat so much? Ron, I guess it's a country act. <laughs> Another platter. I fried 12 chickens. And he asked for more. Get Uncle Joe. Kitchen. Might just as well. I ain't doing any good here. All right, we have some more corn, please. All right, Peter, the coast is clear. In the three days they've been here, they've consumed a grand total of 72 pork chops, 174 eggs, 8 pounds of butter, 22 gallons of milk, 22 apple pies, and a 5-pound box of candy the girls were going to give me for Mother's Day. Don't blame me. All I've got to show for the last three days is a bent fork and spoon. What I want to know is where are they putting it all? <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> Uncle Joe! Uncle Joe! Uncle Joe! Kate, I'm 
damn busy doctor in the circus. Uncle Joe, I just saw a little man that high come out of the bathroom. A little man? Oh, come now. I tell you, I saw him, and he went in that room. <laughs> Would you mind telling me what you... Where's the little man? Little man? Why, well, there's no little man in here. Would you, do you mind if I look? Well, help yourself. with heartburn. <laughs> he wasn't one of our guests. I have never seen him before. Now, Uncle Joe, there are a lot of people in this hotel who have not registered. Kate, you're seeing things. I have seen everything but money. Now, I want you to go upstairs and you tell Mr. Harmon I want him to take care of the bill and I want him to do it right now. Now, wait a minute. Either you ask him or I'll ask him. You'll ask me what, Mrs. Bradley? Isn't it a beautiful day? Yes, it is a beautiful day. Now then, you were going to ask me something, Mrs. Bradley? Yes, Mr. Harmon, Well, I'm afraid I was... it'll have to wait because I want to ask you something. Now, I hate to start the day off with a complaint. Complaint? Well, I don't know what else you call it. You see, I've been in this hotel of yours for ten days now, and you have yet to present me with a bill. <laughs> well, I... I'm not interested in your excuses. Can you imagine what financial shape I'd be in if I ran my circus the way you run your hotel? You folks ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Well, I would... I, Mrs. I, I, Bradley, I... may I please have a bill? <laughs> <laughs> is this my bill, Mrs. Bradley? Yes, it is. Well, I would like the entire bill, please. Oh, well, that, that's the entire bill. Oh, that's it, huh? All righty. There you are. <laughs> oh, and Mrs. Bradley, in the future, let's keep our accounts up to date, shall we? <laughs> See you at rehearsal. And you were worried. Well, I gotta go doctor the show some more. <laughs> directory for show business people. <laughs> Got the shady rest in it, too. With a mention of windbag Joe Carson and murderous Kate Bradley. Ladies <laughs> gentlemen, I direct your attention to the Sills Harmon. Routine. You like good food, don't you? Sure. And keep throwing the knives and don't make waves. <laughs> Uncle Joe, what in the world? Hey, Mom, look at me. Really, Joe, you get down from 
from there. This is fun. Look at me, Mom. <laughs> Uncle Joe, did you hear what I said? Stop this thing immediately. Not now, Kate. to make. Oh, boy, lunch. Hey. Oh, hold, it. Hold, it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, my The dining room is closed oh. forever. Oh. Now, just a minute, Mrs. Bradley. As a paying guest, I'm afraid I'll have to object. You're not a paying guest. You're a sign-in guest. But, Kate, that Quiet, ain't... you're not even a guest. <laughs> Mr. Herman, I found this little guidebook under your bed. Oh. How many times have I told you? Be neat. <laughs> Now then, you all have exactly 15 minutes to pack and leave. But, Kate, I ain't... You've got 10. <laughs> Mom, you can't throw them out. Where will they go? Oh, well, let's see now. Um, hmm. May I suggest Crabwell Corners Inn? See Frida Grayson. She is good for two weeks free room and board by telling her that she looks like Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't work. Yeah, uh, you knew it wouldn't work. You think everybody's as stupid as you are? Uh, as stupid as you are, that's all. Oh, I like that. Oh, you like that? Oh, like Why don't we go to your mother's place? Give me the Ruth? Yes, yeah, this is the last room. Boy, what a mess. I've been taking inventory, and this is what we had that we don't have now. 18 towels, 22 knives, 18 forks, 7 spoons, 12 ashtrays, and my grandmother's picture. Grandma's picture? Well, they left the picture, but they took the frame. And that is an all-time record for things swiped at the Shady Rest Hotel. And they seem like such nice people. And they taught me so much. <laughs> Ta-da! Forget it. Now that you're all finished, you can all line up outside the bathroom door for a nice hot bath. Hey! Me first, for a change. <laughs> Uncle Joe! Uncle Joe! What's the matter, Kate? Your friends forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> when you're through, be sure and scrub the ring off the tub. <laughs> Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.